Yo, what is up? In this video right now, you're going to learn how to speak in group situations if you stutter. We know how tough this can be, right? How excruciating this feeling can be of hiding, of anxiety, of worry, and of getting judged, of ruining the, of ruining the flow of conversations, of thinking, what we have to say is not good enough, so we hold back and we get caught in our heads and we anticipate and we try to formulate these sentences and add them in to the perfect spot, but there's never no perfect spot, so we hold back and then we go to bed at night and we cry. Like, we know what that's like. For me specifically, there's one job I always went to every summer. It was a golf course, Swanee Set in Pitt Meadows, British Columbia. Look it up, it's nice. And... <laughs> I was in turf care and every time at lunch around 1030 because lunch was that early because we started so early we would sit down if it looks like I'm crying I just had a sneezing fit so don't mind that every time at lunch we would sit down there'd be about eight of us at a table for some reason it seemed like everyone was best friends with each other Everyone was best friends with it with each other and they all had certain humor That I found was fucking hilarious That was my type of humor and They all had the same humor But they were all a little bit older than me not all of them like half half of them They, they all seemed like they all already knew each knew each other and they were all talking very fast back and forth and all I did every single day at the lunch table was sit there and laugh. Sit there and legitimately just laugh. Because they were funny. But I would never say one word. Never say one word. And anytime anyone asked me something, straight panic. I'd be straight panicked. I'd be filled with anxiety, filled with embarrassment, filled with shame, filled with frustration filled with anger all at once and I was never truly me I was always a version of myself that I thought they wanted to see so I try to be just as funny or I try to be really quick and witty like them or I try to speak in the same pace they were talking and if they were talking fast I would try to talk fast I was never owning who I was and of course that caused me to stutter. Of course it caused me to look like inauthentic and feel inauthentic and just go to bed at night and be like, what the fuck was that? So let's get this video started right now. All right, if you don't know who I am, my name is Chase Gillis. I help people overcome stuttering in the authentic way without any speech techniques, without any fluency devices, but by learning what is actually holding the person back in the first place, why we care so much about what other people think of us, learning to let go of everything that restricts us from being authentic, and as a byproduct of that, we overcome our stutter. That's just how it works, that's how I did it, that's how I teach my clients to do it. If you're excited right now and that just in, in, in sparked curiosity, then you can look at the close link down below, book a free one-on-one -on -one consultation call with me, and we'll talk about your situation. So let's get right into this video. I would say there's two types of people you can be if you're having pain right now and you feel like you're holding yourself back in group settings, all right, if you stutter. There's two different types of people you can be, and I would alternate between the one and two. So the first type of person I was in this group setting at Swanee Set, the golf course, was it wasn't so much I had words I wanted to say that I was not saying. It was that words were not coming to my brain. It's that I was legitimately drawing blanks. When they would, when they would say certain things, my mind would not actually think of things to say. So it didn't feel like I was holding back. It just felt like, oh, I just don't have anything to say. And that felt a lot better, right? That, that energy that I was sitting in, I was still able to laugh. And I was able to find funny and it felt a lot better energy. But the truth is that it, the, whether it was this, this person I was or the other scenario that you can be, which is 
you actually know what to say and you're holding back. You know what to say, you have things you want to say, but you don't say them. Both scenarios, words are not coming to my brain and I do know what to say, but I'm not saying it. Both scenarios lead to the same outcome. And the same outcome was I'd be in bed at night thinking, why can't I fucking join the conversation? Why can't I just be like everybody else? Why can't I be free flowing and spontaneous like they all are? Why, why can't that be me? That caused me so much pain. So now let's break down the exact steps that I've had to go through to be, to be from that shy, anxiety ridden, shame spot where I was nothing but holding back words wouldn't even come into my brain and I'd just be the mute character in the background to being able to join conversations now with complete strangers with little to none anxiety being able to now lead conversations feeling very expressive and very natural and just being able to flow in the conversation with everybody else all right what's crazy it's not even me so much going up to people anymore I still do and I love doing that but a lot of the times people now come up to me in groups of people either guys or girls they'll come up to me and they'll just start talking to me with the desire to be led with the desire to be led in the conversation it seems like that's magical right it seems like that's something that's out of my control that oh it's only because he's tall or it's only because he's wearing good clothes. You're like, whatever, whatever excuses may come up to your brain. It's none of that. I'm, I'm not a natural. I'm none of that. I was very, I was as shy as it gets. It's something I had to learn. And I'm going to teach you the same things I had to learn right now. The first thing that I want to talk about that really impacted my life in terms of group, com in terms of group conversations is called role theory. What role theory is, is when you look at human behaviors and you see that every human desires to make simplicity of the world. And in order to do that, we have to put people in boxes. So some people get labeled in the box of the shy, introverted, quiet kid. Some people get labeled in the box of, of oh, that, that guy is just a character, like he's just wild. Some people get put in the box of mom. Some people get put in the box of teacher. Some people get put in the box of good boy or good girl who does nothing wrong. We legitimately, like don't judge a book by its cover is complete bullshit. We all put people in boxes. We all do. First impression, we put someone in a box. Now let me give you a, a scenario for you to play in your brain. Let's say you go out to a bar, right? And you're, with, and you're with your friends. And these friends see you as a quiet person. These friends has, have the expectation that you're going to be quiet and, with, and, with, and withheld and not talking to many people. And you, you usually don't start conversations with just random people. What are the chances you're going to go and have the time of your life? What are the chances you're going to go meet so many new people and have so many great connections? You will be, you will be battling against human behavior. You'll be battling against these people's frames of you. They've already framed you inside this box and they put pressure on you subconsciously to withhold this version of the, of yourself, to withhold the version of yourself in which they already see you as. Well, let's say you go to the same bar and this time you're with friends who see you as an outgoing person, as a friend who, as they see you as this friend who just talks to so many random people. Like it's crazy. You, you, you can't stop this guy from talking to random people. He's just a maniac. When he goes out, he's just so extroverted. What are the chances you're going to go and speak to more people? it's gonna be so much easier. It's gonna be so much more flowy. And the reason why I told you this is because this isn't uh, something that hurts us. It can be, and it most definitely has for the majority of your life, but it is our biggest fucking superpower. 
since we know role theory and since I knew role theory, what I did was I started making first impressions with new people how I wanted to be seen. I started making first impressions and how I wanted to be seen, what I, kn what I knew I had to become to overcome my stutter. Be more extroverted, be more expressive, be more authentic. I started showing up that way and I was over the top. And when I would make a first impression in a group and I would just push myself to be more expressive, to be more authentic, to be more talkative, their perception of me is like, oh, this guy, he's expressive. This guy, he's talkative. This, this guy, he joins conversations. And when I tell you about how people come up to me and start conversations and want to be led, is because they've seen me talk to other people and they already have that perception of me that, oh, he's a social person. He's a person that can lead a group. He's a person that likes to talk to everybody. So I'm, they're drawn to that. It's nothing that was magical. It's human nature. They desire that. And for you to show up as a first impression, to be the person that you want to be, will put you in such an advantageous spot to make this... Uh, lasting a transformative experience for you because you can't just have one experience one time with people who see you as extroverted to be extroverted now no because you've been decades and decades and decades in the introverted shy withheld version of yourself but if you consistently see these people and you consistently make new experiences with new people who see you in this new light and you start to get congruence with this version of yourself, and more people start seeing you this way, it's gonna come with a lot less tension to be extroverted. It's gonna come with a lot less tension, a lot less tension to be expressive when you start to get consistent, consistently, daily, weekly, monthly congruence with how people see you and with who you are by default. Does that make sense? That is something super fucking massive, all right? And the second thing, I really only have time to tell you two of the main things, all right? The first thing is role theory, understanding that the second thing is self-esteem. This is the tide that rises all ships. Once this self-esteem rises, everything else rises as well. Every person who stutters knows they have to have higher self-esteem, knows that they have low self-esteem, and knows that because they have low self-esteem, they have those negative self-talk which defeat them before they even join the conversation. And every person knows they have to rise their self-esteem, and few, few people know how to do it, and even fewer people have the actual guts to do it. Because this is where pain kicks in. This is where dis discomfort kicks in but the truth is what is what means more to you temporary discomfort or lasting suffering because lasting suffering is hiding and repressing for the rest of your life temporary dis discomfort is how you grow your self-esteem and it only lasts in that moment and then you feel fucking amazing you feel fucking amazing so since you made it this far in the video, I will share with you how to actually grow your self-esteem. The first step is to realize why you have low self-esteem right now, why you think low of, your, low of yourself. And for the majority of people who stutter, it's different with everybody. Like legitimately, I take my first week with new clients to realize what is holding them back from seeing them in the light that they want to be seen in. The majority of people, it comes down to their stutter their relationship with your stutter, all right? Is it your relationship with your stutter? Do you feel your stutter makes you look weird? Do you feel your stutter makes you look uncool? Do you, do you feel anxiety and embarrassment and shame and anger and frustration and, inferior, and inferiority with your stutter? If you do, that means you have a negative relationship with your stutter. And that means every time you stutter, your self-esteem is gonna drop. And if your self-esteem is low, you're gonna stutter more. And it, goes into that cycle where you continue down this loop and loop and loop and loop and loop until you are hiding 
so fucking much that you are terrified to say one word. All right, I've, I've been down that spot. It is not fun. So realize why, what is making you think low of yourself. A lot of people, it's not the main, it's not the only thing, but a lot of the times, the main thing is their, their relationship with your stutter. Once you're able to work on that, once you're able to work on your relationship with your stutter, so it no longer arises anxiety, embarrassment, shame, anger, frustration, inferiority, inferiority it doesn't give you those, neg those negative self-talk. How easy is it going to be for you to join conversations and flow? How easy is it going to be for you to not hold back in those conversations? How easy is it for you going to be to show up as a person that you want to show up as? If you don't have the anxiety, if you don't feel like you have to avoid stuttering, if you're okay with it, and if you say, fuck that, it does not matter, it does not hold me back whatsoever, that's the space you want to be in. But in order to get there, like I said, you have to face discomfort. You have to. It's the payoff. Nothing good comes easy. Nothing good comes easy. Me being able to now speak in conversations and flow and not feel inferior and just be natural like everybody else did not come easy. And if you think it's going to come easy, this, this YouTube channel, my advice will never work for you. All right. The majority of people say, I want to be in flow and conversation. And they think I just have to stop stuttering. Let's pick up a speech technique. And now I'm using a speech technique in these conversations. But guess what? There's still so much judgment. You still feel so much judgment and time pressure that the majority of the time you will be unable to use the speech technique because you feel so much pressure to please someone else. You feel so much pressure to prove yourself that taking time to use a speech technique will do no fucking good. How much good? No fucking good. You won't be able to. Speech techniques do not address your problem whatsoever. And if you've tried that and it doesn't work for you, and if you want to learn how to speak naturally and effortlessly, just how it should come out, believe me. I have that strong desire too, and it's possible. If you want to learn more, learn more. If you want to learn more, and you really are serious, not just someone who wants to dip their toes in the water, but are serious about changing their life, then click the link down below and book a free consultation call with me. And on the call, we will look at your we will look at your situation and see if and how I can help you whatsoever. We'll take a look at where you're where you feel like you're being held back, what is stopping you from reaching your goals, and seeing if I would be a help whatsoever to help you reach your goals, all right? If you're interested, click a link down below in the description, fill, fill in some information, your, your name and your phone number, and I'll be speaking to you soon, all right? That is the steps, that is how I was able to flow in conversations, have people come up to me and talk and just want to be lead all right it didn't come that easy it, it's simple but not easy i always say that it's simple but not easy all right i love you click that link down below if you want to book a free one-on-one -on -one consultation call i love you peace out